All right, so the first thing I want to do before I you know, do my Spider-Man here is I want to come up with a gesture. Now, a gesture is like, you know, uh, the shape of like a C or an S. Uh, th those are typically what's referred to as gesture lines, and that's what you fit your pose into. You fit it into one of those gestures, and I actually have two gestures going on in this pose. The first gesture is that hard C shape, which you can see going from his head, and it's going to go down to his knee. And so that's one that's one gesture line, that uh, that sharp C curve. Actually, it goes all the way from his his left hand to our right, the one that's extending way out there, and then all the way down to his knee. So that makes like this really sharp C. That's one curve. The other curve is like the S between his two hands, from one hand to the other. That kind of makes a slight S curve. Uh, and so those are two inter intersecting uh, gesture lines. So that, that's typically all gesture lines. Have you ever wonder what, what what is a gesture line? It is a C shape or an S shape, and the S shape can be in any way. It can be like uh, thin at the top and thick at the at the bottom. That is, the loop can be very fat at the bottom and very thin at the top, or vice versa, or pretty even. And that's all that's meant by gesture lines. And so a gesture drawing is a a drawing, a pose that fits into a very quick pose. You know, typically gesture drawings are done very quickly, and it's just to capture that gesture line. And that's all you're trying to do with the gesture drawing is to fit it into those gesture lines, the C's and S's. Um, then once I um, have those basic lines down, like where I need everything to be and I have kind of the proportions are going to be and stuff, then I begin drawing the actual character into it. Um, now one thing I do that's important here with this chest, as this chest is rolling back away from me, uh, it's as if I did two spheres next to each other. But when you view the sphere more from the front, where you can mainly only see the front sphere, not really the back sphere, then it looks like, you know, over overlying hills. And that's how the chest and shoulder is going to be when viewed from this angle, that is his his right to our left. You can notice how that chest is going to roll back over and then we're just going to see part of the sphere behind it, which would be his shoulder. And so it's important to remember that when, when doing certain poses, that oftentimes you'll have body parts overlapping each other and when that happens you're just going to see part of the other body part, like over roll, like rolling hills. Same thing happens with like really really foreshortened um, let's say your knee and stuff like that and your leg you know, and foot you'll have like the foot and then behind that the calf and behind that part of the thigh um, and it's almost it's almost gonna look like spheres coming at you um, uh, obviously not quite spheres but you kinda get the idea and after I have completed um, you know the the basic line work and everything then I go in with my other pencil I have two pencils I used here both mechanical. One just has regular standard lead, which is pretty light. You know, that, that is, it's pretty hard lead, so it comes out pretty light in the paper. This is standard lead you'd buy in a mechanical pencil from like, you know, 7-Eleven or, or Safeway or something. And then I have this uh, other mechanical pencil that's a little bit more advanced um, not in design and everything. It's a little, little bit more expensive, but it's still a pretty cheap pencil. But I have nice lead in it. I have uh, soft lead in it. I can't remember what the lead is exactly, but it's a softer lead, like a 4B or something like that, maybe even 6B. And uh, you can buy that mechanical lead, you know, from art stores and stuff. And so I go over all the all the line work that I want to be very dark with that pencil. And then I'll go back to my other pencil to do the lighter shading. That will be like the shading for the red, you know, for his webbing. I want to make sure I get an overall uh, shading to the blue part of the suit and then go back over. Uh, the other shaded parts and make them darker, make them really stand out. Uh, I didn't go too detailed with this one either. It's not very big. It's a pretty small drawing, so I couldn't really get too detailed anyway. Which is why I use the, um, what's why I'm not using the clutch pencil because it's so small. I have to use a mechanical pencil so I can at least get some detail on there. Now the webbing is just time consuming. It's pretty easy, you know. Once you look at some reference drawings, it's pretty easy to do. And then once you've done it a few times, it, you know, it just it, comes like second nature to do the webbing on Spider-Man. It's just kind of time consuming. That's the only thing about it. So it'd be kind of I would I would really I would personally really hate to do a Spider-Man comic. Uh, I would hate to have to do the webbing, you know, like every single time, every, if, especially if Spider-Man took up a whole bunch of panels with a suit on to have to do the webbing every single time in every single panel would just be a bummer. I would really go I would grow tired of that very quickly. That's why I purposely don't make my characters too complex in my in my comic book. Um, that way, I don't have to draw the same complex thing over and over again. I won't. I usually don't have them dress in really complex clothes or like a shirt with a logo on it because I don't want to draw that logo over and over again. But you know, 
what, when it really suits the story, then I do put it there. But I want to make sure it really suits the story. I want to, you know, if I'm gonna make them have complex clothing on, you know, with the really detailed belt, you know, that I have to draw every single time, then I want to make sure it makes sense to the story. And I'm just about done now. I'm just adding some, some final shading into the red areas and, and the webbing. Thank you for watching. Please.